praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, Mother Jessica. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are so happy to be back with you. It is a beautiful day outside. All that sunshine. God gave it to us. Aren't we happy? It kind of makes you feel like there's something brand new going on. But anyway, let's just go to Psalm 90. That's our morning scripture. We're reading it from the New English Translation. It's just a couple of verses, so we took various verses out of that. So if you're following along, I'm going to tell you the verse before we get to it. Verse 1, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and all the world, and the world, pardon me, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. We're going to jump to verse 12. So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Verse 14. Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Verse 16. Let your work appear to your servants, and your glory to their children. Verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for his promises to us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just for even giving us the word. Hallelujah. So we can live by daily. Hallelujah. time in prayer every single night at 6 p.m. You can dial in and pray. And it's so funny because this week we had our, our members of Mount Peace that went through it this week. Hallelujah. We've had lost ones. We've had people. We've been praying for people. The next day they're gone. Oh, and you, and you, would, you would wonder. Some people would wonder, but oh, we have that blessed assurance that God knows what's going to happen no matter what. And whatever he does, it is for his good and our good. Hallelujah. So I would just ask that you think about that during the week, just dialing into our prayer. It, it's just such a blessing to be in his presence, no matter where you are. It's a blessing to be in his presence, and he allows us to do that. So I would just admonish you, if you haven't been joining on to join, hallelujah, hallelujah, it is changing lives, hallelujah, you hear people praying on there, what is that, it's changing lives, hallelujah, hallelujah, now while we're here, we're going to start our praise and worship, hallelujah, we're in his presence again, praise again.
and on the land of God's celestial shores. Praise God. We're going to go where joy shall never end. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm so grateful today for Jesus, and I thank God for all things. Thank Him because He loves us with an undying and everlasting love. It is in Him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Hallelujah. Well, it is the first Sunday in May. Praise our God. And we're still, hallelujah, being sequestered or sheltered in place. Praise the Lord. So we come to you again, hallelujah, uh, streaming live from the sanctuary of Mount Pisgah Ministry. Hallelujah. hallelujah. At 1813 Church Street in Evanston, Illinois. Praise God. We're so grateful for what God has done. Hallelujah. For what he's doing and for what he's going to do. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm rejoicing this morning even though my heart is heavy. Praise the Lord. But I'm rejoicing because God is still good. Amen. I, I, I strike that. God is not still good. God is good. Hallelujah. There's no qualifiers for God being good. Thank you, Jesus. He'll never change. It is his, his agenda to be good. And he's good on purpose. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy about it. Uh, as I, we all know that there are people who are going on every day, every single time day. It's always been that way, but it's just so magnified now with Hallelujah. Uh, so many in one place and so many praise our God all over the world. And thank you, Jesus. Praise God because God is in control. And uh, I told a pastor friend of mine, I said, I'm going to sing that song Sunday because uh, he said to me, he said, well, they're going one by one. One by one. And I thought about the song that says, there's a land beyond the river. That we call the sweet forever. And we only reach that shore by faith decree. One by one we'll gain the portals. There to dwell with the immortals. When they ring those gold. Our days have known that number, and our eyes shall close in slumber. And the king commands the spirit to be free. Hallelujah! Glory to God! One by one we'll gain a portal. With the immortals when they ring those golden bells for you and me. Can't you hear the bells ringing? Can you hear the angels singing to the blood?
But God has promised. Hallelujah. He's been true to his promise. He's kept us. He has kept us. He has kept us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to talk to you this morning. Hallelujah. As we continue with our theme. Uh, about now is the time for the church to shine. Now is the time for the church to shine. And so in God's theme uh, for us at Mount Pisgah, I don't know about everyone else, but at Mount Pisgah, this is a theme that God has given us, and we are going to do it by his, glo by his, by his glory, by his strength, by his will. Praise the Lord, and he has never failed us yet. We failed him many, many times. We've come short so many times, but the failure is not in God. It is in me. It is in us. Thank you, Lord. And so I want to continue as we move on in this theme. Uh, today is uh, the first Sunday normally, uh, if you will, uh, our old normal. We would have communion on this Sunday, and we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We celebrate communion, uh, as so many other churches do, Protestant churches. Uh, on the first Sunday, we, we do it once a month. There are some who do it for more than once a month, and that's fine. The Bible didn't tell us, uh, give us any number of times to do it. It just says, as often as you do it, um, you do show forth the Lord's death until he comes. And we have chosen for us uh, to do it once a month, and today would be that day that we celebrate. But I've made, and I know that we can do it even virtually, but I, I feel in my spirit, I believe I've been prompted to wait until, hallelujah, as Jesus said, we can eat it again anew, fresh in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And there's going to be a new a newness about coming back together. If the Lord spare his spare us and give us another day, it's going to be like brand new. Hallelujah. And we are going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. It doesn't matter what day it is, but as soon as the order is lifted that we can come, that Sunday will be our communion Sunday. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so we're looking forward to that. But until then, we move on in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Today's uh, message is entitled, Shine in God's Plan, as a part of the series. But the sub subject, if you will, is God's plan, <clears throat> his honor, our good. God's plan, his honor, our good. God's plan, his honor, our good. We don't always know what the plan of God is. But whatever it is, we know one thing. It's for his honor and our good. So as we look at Exodus chapter 14, God reveals a, a wonderful picture of what it means to be saved from bondage. Also, what it means to be sanctified from bondage. God shows us in Exodus 14 again, what it means to be saved from bondage and also what it means to be sanctified from bondage. We do know that being saved and sanctified are two totally different things. This picture in Exodus 14 will help us to understand that in such a way that it will bring honor to him and we'll understand that that is for our good. I hope and pray uh, as we enter into this discussion that this introduction doesn't frighten or offend anyone. Unfortunately, the term sanctified can conjure up feelings of uh, uh, and, and, uh, and erroneous thoughts which is associated with the early Pentecostal movement. From my early experience as a part of the movement, when you heard the term sanctified, it meant, in my experience, as a part of the movement, because that's where I was, being sanctified meant a very austere lifestyle full of the rules of do's and don'ts. That's what it meant. And uh, initially, I, 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 uh, 
I viewed the doctrine as, how shall I say it, as a beautiful green and flowery meadow, promising a beautiful life free from bondage to sin and the bondage of sin. Now, while I tried to accomplish that bondage-free living by binding myself, as was the practice to many others, to follow the rules, but I failed miserably. Following the rules, following the do's and the don'ts, I failed miserably. It just did not work. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the reason that I failed was because my trust was in the doctrine and not God's word. My trust was in the doctrine and not God's word. Hallelujah. Now, here's what God's word teaches us. That the grass withers and the flower fades. No matter how beautiful and how lush the doctrine may look. The grass withers, the lush green grass withers and the beautiful flowers fade. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? The word of our God shall stand forever. His word. His word is living and active. Able to judge the desires and thoughts of the heart. That's what the word teaches. Thanks be to God, it is this perfect immutable gift without the slightest shadow from the Father of light that discerned my heart's desire. I had a desire to be free from the bondage of sin. I had a desire to live a life free from bondage. But I couldn't do it because I was focused on the wrong thing. But when God's word came, that immutable word, that word without the slightest hint of changing or turning, no shadows in the word of God. It discerned, as the scripture said, my heart desire. It discerned. I, I, listen, I couldn't trust my heart because I failed too many times. The word of God says in the book of Jeremiah that the heart is desperately wicked above all things. It asks the question, who can know it? Where we were born or how we were born. Under what circumstances we came into this world, our hearts are desperately wicked. Only God knows what's in our hearts. And because of that, I'm so grateful to know that he gave us a word, his word, that can search the heart. That can discern what's in our hearts and our minds and do something about it. Hallelujah. And that's what he did. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. I can tell you right now that Jesus said it is knowing that truth. Knowing that truth. Jesus said that we shall know the truth and the truth will make us free. And knowing that truth sets us free. It sets not only us, but it sets anyone free who know the truth. You can be set free. Now, because of that, I can testify that I know the truth. And that I am saved and sanctified from bondage. Hallelujah. I'm saved and sanctified from bondage. Today's text is full of that same truth which God has spoken to us. And yes, God has spoken and there is a word from the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I will start with the first four of 31 verses in chapter 14. That it teaches us how we can be saved and sanctified from bondage to bring honor and glory to God. That's what we want. Because that's all that matters. Bringing honor and glory to God. Bringing honor and glory to God. His plan includes using us to accomplish his divine will. For his honor and for our good. Even, listen to this, when we complain Murmur or resist his will. Isn't that wonderful? Even when we complain, 
murmur or resist his will. His will includes using us to accomplish that very will. His will that is for his honor and our good. Aren't you glad about that today? Hallelujah. I am. Thank you, Jesus. Well, let's look at verse 1. And I've broken it up, and, and I'm going to read each verse as I, as I comment on what God is saying to us in these verses. Verse 1 is a very wonderful and powerful verse. Don't skip over it because it's just a few words. Notice what it says. If you have your Bibles, read along with me in verse 1 of chapter 14 of the book of Exodus. The Bible said, the Lord spoke to Moses. That's it. The Lord spoke to Moses. That's it. The Lord spoke to Moses. Five words, isn't it? Not very many. But you know what? It only takes a hint to the wise to be sufficient. And it is. God don't have to give you a multitude of words to get his message across to you. Hallelujah. I don't have to speak myriads and myriads and myriads of words. If God wants to speak to you, hallelujah, does he want to speak to you? Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Will he speak to you? Yes, he will. The Lord spoke to Moses. I submit that it's even better when you or I can declare God spoke to me. Now, it's wonderful that God, we can read that God spoke to Moses, but we shouldn't leave it there. We should have a desire for God to speak to me. Andre Crouch wrote a song that says, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, what can we do? We need you more each day to show us your perfect way, for there is no other way. That we can live. How many, hallelujah, want to hear from God? I want God to speak to me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I realize that everyone doesn't want God to speak to them. Because if God speaks to you, that means there's a, there's a part of you that, uh, that's always resisting. To, because if, when he speaks to you, you become accountable and responsible for what he said. Hallelujah. Now, notice I said... There's a part of all us. All of us don't want to hear what God said. It's that part of the flesh that fights against God. The Bible teaches us that the carnal mind is not subject to the will of God. Neither indeed can it be. You can never make your body, your flesh, your outward man uh, happy to receive what God is saying. But God spoke to you. And as I said, it, was, it would be even better if we can declare God spoke to me. Now, the powerful, liberating truth is he has spoken and he will speak to you and to me. In Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 tells us that God at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Praise the Lord. Has Jesus spoken to you? Have you heard? Have you obeyed him? Those are the three questions that you ought to think about as this word is going forth. Has God spoken to me? Have I heard him? Did I hear him? Have I obeyed him? Verse 1 is crystal clear. Moses heard him. Now, it didn't say that, did it? But it's crystal clear that Moses heard him. How do you know that Moses heard him? Because it said, I submit that the Lord will, on, will only speak to those, whoo, hallelujah, whom he know will hear him and recognize him as Moses did from the, his previous experience and interaction with God. Moses was not mistaken for what he heard. Moses had heard God. When did he first hear him? The Bible tells us, hallelujah, that it was way back in, in, in Genesis that Moses first heard God. And, 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 and I'm sorry, in the beginning of Exodus when God first, when, when, I mean, yeah, Genesis when God heard him. And, and when he heard God, and he said, take your shoes off. The ground is, the, you, the, I'm sorry, the ground that you're standing is holy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so God heard him. And he heard 
God. Now, I, I, I said this and I'm going to go over it again. I submit that the Lord will only speak to those whom he know will hear him. God doesn't waste, waste his words. He doesn't, he doesn't waste his word. Uh, he, God doesn't uh, speak as a gap filler. You know what a gap filler is? Is when people say, when in a conversation and it's talking to you and saying, I don't know, you know him, and you know him, and you know him, and, 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 all, and all, and all. Those are gap fillers because they don't have, uh, uh, they, they, don't, they don't express themselves in a singular thought. Because they're thinking and they're not, they, and, and before they can put it all together, they have to say something in between to fill the gap, to finish out what they want to say. God doesn't speak as a gap filler. Every word that he speaks, praise the Lord, is yea and nay. He doesn't have to fill gaps. Because everything that he says comes to pass. Everything. So God doesn't waste his words. He doesn't miss his words. And I'm telling you right now, you can be encouraged to know that if he's spoken to you, there's a reason, there's a purpose for him speaking to you. So don't take it lightly. The scripture says in the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your hearts. So don't harden your heart. Don't try to ignore God. Yes, Moses heard him. And Moses recognized him. Because he had that experience with him. Because it was evidenced by his obedience. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, Tell the Israelites that, that they must turn and camp before Pahatharoth between Migdal and the sea. You are to camp by the sea before Baal Zephon, opposite it. Now that doesn't seem so significant, but if you if you research it and you do some studying, you'll find that they were headed in one direction and God told them to turn and go another direction. Now the direction that they were headed in was the direction of their uh, promised destiny. They were headed toward their promised destiny and then God says turn and go away from their promised destiny. Can you imagine? Can you imagine watching people turning and going and obeying what Moses said, but they were looking, when they were turning this way, they were still looking back, well, aren't we going the wrong way? And can you imagine some people asking, well, what's happening? Why are we going this way? What's going on? Because they were following a path that made absolutely no sense. They were confused. Why were they confused? Because they had not heard God. In the churches today, God speaks to the leaders. And he gives the leaders the message. And when a message is given out, a lot of times there are those in the congregation or among the people who think that they know better than what, the, what God is saying. And, and they miss what God is saying because they're thinking their own thoughts. And so as they pass Going that way. They think, well, I'm going to miss my destiny. Hallelujah. How many know that you cannot miss your destiny? For your good is for your good. You're talking about not only being saved from bondage in, in Egypt, but you're talking about being saved or saved or being sanctified, if you will. Sanctified from bondage. You got to get saved from sin, but you need to be sanctified from the bondage that you were in when, and when you were enslaved in sin. Your lifestyle has to change. Your lifestyle has to change. It can no longer be the same. Hallelujah. Your victory is in your obedience. You may not understand what, which way you're going, but you need to just understand that God has spoken. And because God has spoken, I have heard him speak. Praise God. Because I've heard him speak, I've recognized his voice. Why? Because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. My sheep know my voice. Stranger, they won't follow. Hallelujah. It's good to know the voice of God. Because there are all kinds of voices out here today. I was watching television the other night and I saw a commercial that really was very astounding. And this is what the enemy does. He loves us into a false sense of security to make us think that we are so self-sufficient. 
that we have it all together, that we have evolved, when in fact we are going backwards. A commercial said, was talking about some drug, that people can take this drug and, and help to prevent themselves from becoming victims of AID, AIDS. So take this drug so that you can protect, better protect yourself against AIDS or if you are having what it does, what you need to do in order to, to, have, to, to, to uh, get AIDS. And the Bible tells us how to do that already. Already, it's already told us that. It's nothing new. God has already told us what we need to do. And if we will follow what God says, it's just like what the Surgeon General, if you will, or Dr. Fauci has said. He says, in order for us, he gave us, and I didn't talk about this too much, but I just want to say tonight, today, that he gave us a, an ultimatum. The ultimatum limited our choices, that's all. Our, 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 when, we, when we have unlimited choices, they're called alternatives. But when, when there's an ultimatum issue, the issue limits your author, alternatives to just two choices. And the two choices were either we shut down or we die. Shut down or die. And I was happy to be speaking to uh, my, my wife's cousin who lives in Sacramento, California. And I was asking, well, how are things over your way? How are things over your way? And she was saying to me, well, it's great. We're not, we're not as bad as Los Angeles and, uh, and Chicago and New York and Detroit. And I, said, and I said to her, because she has a doctorate in, 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 in human humanities and in, in, in anthropology and she's studying human behavior. And I said, well, well why do you think that is? Because that's her job. She's in social, social work and, and, and uh and, and, and studying trends and doing things like that. I, I think that's a part of what she's doing. I'm kind of adding stuff to her, but I, I'm pretty sure it, it involves all of that. And I said, well, why? Why do you think that is? And she says, well, I really don't know. But then she said, but you know, she said, when I think about it, what we did, what, how did, what did we do differently, what we did differently in Sacramento, when the order was issued for us to shut down, for us to, to, to shelter in place, or whatever, however term that we want to uh, use it, the lockdown. She said, the government or the authorities issued the, the lockdown rule and it says if it, the rule of being locked down in Sacramento included with it jail terms. In other words, if you didn't obey, you got caught, there was some jail time. And I laughed and I said, oh, that law had a little more teeth in it. It took away even more of the alternatives. It was, real, it was a real ultimatum. There were no alternatives. You couldn't do it. Well, praise the Lord. I want to hasten on. I realize my time is going. <laughs> praise God. But what happened was he told them, said, go, go back the other way. Go back toward bondage instead of going towards your destiny. Go to bondage. Hmm. The way that they were going was like headed to a bondage. In other words, go back to the enemy's territory. Lord have mercy. Go back to the enemy's territory. Yes, that's where your deliverance is. Yes, that's where your freedom is. Yes, that's where your victory is. Well, it don't seem like that to me because I'm going to against where I thought we should be going. Praise the Lord. I'm just saying what I think that they probably were thinking because that's human nature. <sighs> to go back. But they obeyed. Hallelujah. And there's a reason for that, and I want to get to it. Hallelujah. Going back. Situating yourself in a place that you don't think you got deliverance. Now, in my notes, I wrote this. Any contradiction relative to the clarity, to the validity, to the authority and authenticity of those verses 1 and 2, any contradiction or question that, 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 that's relative to those verses, to the truth of those verses, any contradiction to those does not come from God. Amen. It originates in Genesis chapter 3. 
from the serpent. Because whatever God says, there should be no contradiction. None whatsoever. And if there is any contradiction, I'm telling you right now, if there's any contradiction to what I'm saying about what this word says, it didn't come, it didn't originate with God. It originated with the serpent in the Genesis chapter 3. Well, you said that's pretty dogmatic, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I make no apology for that. Because God's word is the only thing, hallelujah, that will stand forever. Everything else is going to fail. Every word that someone says, every thought, every philosophy, every religion, if it's not based upon what God's word says, the Bible says, hallelujah, it's going to wither, it's going to fade. But the word of our God shall stand forever. I'm confident of that today. So, the message that Moses gave the people was confusing, as I said. They were fearful and faithless. Like many of us, when we hear a word that doesn't line up with what our thoughts are, we're fearful and faithless. The direction, although coming from God, seemed to contradict their desire and goal. Instead of heading toward their destiny of freedom, they seemed to be headed back to bondage. They were confused because they could not see or did not know, hallelujah, God's plan. I humbly encourage those whom God has chosen to speak for him that we would strive to follow Moses' example. We should be crystal clear that God has spoken and be just as clear with the message and the directions as we confidently instruct God's people. We need to be that clear. We should pray for Holy Spirit to speak through us in such a way, listen, this is it, that God will be honored and the people will be convicted by Holy Spirit to obey. I could preach all day long, but if Holy Spirit don't convict people to obey, they will not obey. And so after every message and before every message, praise God, I'm saying, God, you speak through me. You let your word go out. I may say a myriad of words, but you only have to say, have to say one. Whatever that is, and it'll stick with them. As someone recently said, stick in that claw. Can't be free from it. Can't get rid of it. <laughs> oh, God, when you stand up, you hear it. When you sit down, you hear it. When you lay down, it's in your conscience. God! That's what my prayer is for every sinner. And I remember years ago, and I used to walk in the, in the floor, or walk, walk around the floor and pray, God! And look out my window. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. I, I look out my window and say, God, wake them up. Wake up those who don't know you. Wake them up right now. Make them think about eternity. If I die right now, where will my soul spend eternity? And that is my prayer right now. I need you to hear me. That is my prayer. If you are walking in sin, if you're walking in disobedience, if you're walking in rebellion against God, God, I pray, wake them up. Not when the party is going on, but when everybody's gone home and when you've gone home and, 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 and some of the effects of, of alcohol and drugs have worn off. Notwithstanding that it doesn't have to because when God is in the picture, yes. you can be as drunk as a skunk as they say, but if God speaks to you, you're sober in a half second. So I pray that God will wake you up. God will wake you up. God will wake you up if it's a noonday, if the sun is bright as it ever going to be. But if you're asleep and in trespasses, God, wake them up. Make them think about eternity. Where will my soul spend eternity? Hallelujah. Again, God was crystal clear and gave Moses explicit directions for the Israelites to follow. Now, this God-specified direction was designed, notice this, to provoke the reaction of Pharaoh, which he had ordained as recorded in verses 3 and 4. Look at 3 and 4. Verse 3. Pharaoh will think regarding the Israelites. They are wandering around confused in the land. The desert has closed in on them. Verse 4. I will harden Pharaoh's heart and he will chase after them. Hallelujah. I will gain honor because of Pharaoh and because of all of his army. Ooh, Lord, look at that. You see that? God had a bigger plan 
than you getting to your desired destiny. He had a bigger plan. And that bigger plan was just not for you to get to your desired destiny, but to ensure and secure not only you, but those who are going to come after you. God has a bigger plan. And it's for his honor. But it's for your good. Hallelujah. This is what he says. He continues, and the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. And so that is what they did. Now, I'm going to hasten. The details in 3 and 4 are just as clear as God revealed the thoughts of the enemy and his plan. Think about that. God reveals the thoughts of his enemy and the enemy's plan. I hope you caught that. God says what the enemy is thinking, but he also says what he is going to do. <laughs> Glory to God. The enemy is thinking, but God says he's thinking, but this is what I'm going to do. He's thinking, but I'm going to do. Do you get that? Do you get that? People always say what the devil is saying, what the devil is doing, what the... No, 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 no. What's important is what God is going to do. It has nothing to do with what he's thinking. Because the enemy can only think anyway, he will. My brothers and sisters, that is powerful. However, that is even what is even more powerful is if God told God not only told Moses what the enemy was thinking and what he was going to do, God told him something very rare and precious. He told Moses why he was going to do it. <laughs> I will be honored. Listen, he, he said, I will be honored over Pharaoh and his whole army. God doesn't always tell us why he's doing what he's doing in our lives. He really doesn't always do that. Dr. Warren Wisby says, God will be honored over anyone who does not honor him. Do you hear that? God will be honored over anyone who does not honor him. God directed his people to turn away from going into the direction of their promised destiny. In my Christian journey, I'm discovering that the why of God is much more comforting much more rewarding, much more enlightening, much more encouraging, and much more inspiring than the what of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, Lord, have mercy. One other song might agrees with me when he says, if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. But it's heaven to me. Wherever I be, if he is there, I find it a privilege to his cross to bear. Because if Jesus goes with me, I'll go anywhere. That's the why. If he goes, doesn't matter. Just go with me. Old folks used to sing, I want Jesus to walk with me. While I'm on this pilgrim journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. Much of life the experiences is not clearly explained because we walk by faith and not by sight. One day at a time is all Jesus asks of us. He said, don't worry about tomorrow. Deal with today for good reason. There's enough evil for each day. But my grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, in summary, I want to emphasize four observations. Number one, God's direction is always clear, but not always clear to us. God's direction is always clear, but not always clear to us. That is, that is, and that is my brothers and sisters, when our faith and our experience must overcome our fear. Fear and faith cannot operate successfully in the same heart. Number two, God instructed his chosen people to, to travel in a specified direction. We must remember that God always leads us on a path. He has ordained and designed strictly for his glory and our good. Lord have mercy. He, he, he always has ordained and designed strictly for his glory and our good. The path that we're on. Number three, God's house will be in order. And this is very important, especially for preachers, especially for those who are in leadership. God's house will be in order. Why? Because he'll do it if you go kicking and screaming and murmuring. God's still going to work out his plan. He will ensure that his people obey. So the Israelites, here's what it says. Notice the last, ver last few words in verse number four. So this is what they did. They were told to go and camp. They were told to go this direction. I'm sure there was confusion. I'm sure there was a uh, 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 misunderstanding. There, there was, uh, they were upset. There was anger. There was questions. But they did it. The Bible says, so this is what they did. 
Hallelujah. I want to tell you right now. If we're going to see the victory, if we're going to see God's hand at work, that's what we're going to have to do. Do what he said do. It's going to have to be said of us. That is what he did. And finally, God controls not only our actions, but our thoughts as well. Hallelujah. Notice closely the words in verse 3. God spoke what Pharaoh would think. Woo! Hallelujah. He, how, <laughs> how awesome is that? All the thoughts and feelings about God's people being hapless, confused, vulnerable, vulnerable victims are from the enemy. <laughs> but they were evoked by God to set him up for destruction. Strictly for his honor and our good. Strictly for his honor and our good. God's plan for his honor and our good. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for your word. Bless it to our hearts and our minds. Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you will not allow one word of your jot or tittle of this word to fail. As a matter of fact, God, we want to thank you for the assurance that you've given us that says that your word will not return to you not having accomplished that for which you've assigned it to accomplish. Oh God, we pray today our heart's desire that you will be honored to hear our prayer on behalf of those who don't know you, on behalf of those who are living in sin, on behalf of those who are so tired and confused and have all kinds of questions about what's going on. Be merciful if you will. Be merciful on those, oh God, who don't even know because the enemy has confused them so much that they're listening to people saying, if you've been designated a female at birth, if you've been designated a male at birth, and now you are this or you are that, God be merciful, I pray, as only you can. It is your word that sets us free. Not our thoughts, not our own decisions, but your word. You have designed a plan strictly for your honor, but for our good. Lord, we desire both in our lives. We desire your honor and our good. But Lord God, more than anything else, we desire for you to be honored in our life. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're so grateful this morning for what God has done he's doing and what he's going to do. Remember, hallelujah, we will be here next Sunday at 11 a.m. Praise God, but you don't have to wait until then. You can go to the website and listen to this message over and over again and allow Holy Spirit to speak to you. But that part that you need to hear, praise God, he will reinforce it in your heart and your mind. And also, don't forget that we do have prayer every night, Monday through Saturday from 6 a.m. to 7, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Praise the Lord. On Sunday morning from 10 a.m. to 11. Please join us. If you go to the website, you can get the phone number and the code that you need to join us on our Zoom, Zoom prayer line. Praise God. I know that God will richly bless you. And oh boy, how have we been so blessed on Thursday evenings right after the prayer. Hallelujah for the Bible study. Thank God for the word of God being taught to us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, sister. Uh, Pastor, Sister Paula Blakely it has been just feeding us the word of God, praise the Lord, in such a wonderful way, in such an awesome way. And I, I trust that you will join us if you will. You're free to do so. And then uh, for all of those who have been so faithful in your support of us in prayer and uh, your support of us financially, we, we appreciate it and we thank you so very much. And we encourage you to continue to be faithful to the Lord. And for those who have not yet heard God's voice speaking to you, I pray that he will speak to you and that you would obey, hear him recognizes him and obey. Praise the Lord. We do need you to support both by prayer and financially in Jesus' name. Pray for the Wilson family. Hallelujah. The loss of our oldest sister. Pray for Sister Phoenix for Noah and the loss of her aunt. Pray, praise the Lord for Sister Angie and my wife. And, uh, and as her sister is lying in the hospital there in New Jersey that God will have his way in her life and that God's will will be done. 
pray for her son, her only son, praise God, that God would strengthen him and give him wisdom as to what to do during this time. We love you, and we thank God for you. Until next time, God be with you. God let his face and shine upon you and give you peace. He's able to do exceeding abundant above all we ask and think. We ask you.